you ever wondered if that bullet you dropped while you're reloading is going to be able to shoot as accurately as the ones that didn't get dropped? Or say you leave some ammo out and it gets corroded. Are these things safe to shoot? And if they are safe to shoot, how accurate are they? What we're going to go do now is damage a bunch of bullets a handful of different ways. We're going to take those to the range, see how they perform at 100 yards, and then go out to 500 yards and see what it does there. We are MDT. We design, test, and create precision rifle chassis and accessories to help you shoot better. What we're gonna go do now is damage a bunch of bullets a handful of different ways. First test we're gonna do is dropping a projectile from your bench, something that happens pretty regularly when you're reloading ammo. So one of the common things that happens when you are reloading or sometimes when you happen when you are reloading, you might make a mistake and drop your box of bullets off your top and they hit the ground. Are those bullets still good? Well, we've got 10 bullets on the ground here. We're gonna collect those up and see what happens. Doesn't look too bad. I personally never pick up, I personally never use a bullet that I've dropped on the ground just because I, I just don't know how they're gonna perform downrange. So now we're gonna check that. So we have our corrosion aquarium here. It's set up with a tub of salt water and then a bubbler in there that goes and creates steam uh, and then causes the salt water to fall down onto the ammo and then we'll open up the container and let it sit for a few days and see what the corrosion does to this ammo and then see if we can shoot it. This one's not looking bad. These ones are kind of gross. There's a film on there, but I think they'll be fine. They sat in that salt, in a salt fog, we'll call it, for about eight hours. And then we said, let them sit and oxidize over the weekend and stuff. But overall, nothing major, no major issues I can tell. So when you're reloading, you kind of run into some other issues that could be bullet damage or brass damage. One of the common ones I see or run into on a regular basis is having something stuck in your die, usually a piece of tumbling media that when you go into size it, you don't catch it and it puts a big dent in the side of your brass. Sometimes it will happen as well. Say you are processing your brass and you drop it. Maybe you put a, a little dent in the side of the actual case mouth. How is that going to affect your rounds downrange? Does that dent matter? Does that flat spot matter? What we're gonna do is test that. Okay, so we're gonna step up the damage on these bullets and I'm gonna put them in this case. I got 10 in here again, and I'm just gonna give these a really good shake, uh, say for like 30 seconds, and then uh, we'll take them and try and load them and see if it doesn't, even, if we can still group with these bullets. That makes me feel really bad. <laughs> so I can't really like see any visual damage. They look pretty good. See how those like, these, can you get those like really, like little dimples, like compared to that one? Next one is I'm gonna take a punch to these. The next level of damage isn't really a realistic scenario. Uh, I'm actually gonna go take a, a little punch here, a uh, 116 punch and try and like put a, a dent kind of around the base uh, where the transition to the boat tail. I've heard from other people saying that if you damage this area on a bullet, it's gonna fly all over the place. So we're gonna try and prove that. So one of the regular things we shoot off of when we're at matches is a C-cam. You know, accidents can happen and you might drop your box off the edge or somebody might kick your box of ammo off the edge. We're gonna see what that kind of damage does to your round. We're gonna drop it on cement here from, from this ladder in the shop and see what happens. Okay, so we're at a 100 yard spot. We have our, all our ammo loaded with the different damaged bullets and damaged brass, so on and so forth. Uh, we're gonna go and start our first group though with uh, undamaged rounds. Uh, this is ammo that I've loaded for a match and we're gonna take it and shoot it at 100 yards and see how it groups. the first control group and ends up being right around 0.4 which this gun usually averages with this ammo load then we did the dentist shoulders went in the exact same spot basically no difference uh, they actually the one group was tighter than the control group so obviously you don't need to really worry about that for the most part it seems pretty safe to do we then went and did the drop bolts from a bench uh, like you do when you're reloading once again, not really much of a difference here. All kind of within what the control group would have been and what the gun can shoot. We'll see what these do at 500 yards because it might be an issue that distance. The shaken bullets, a little more interesting. Possibly uh, maybe opened up a touch there on the one group, on the first group on the left, uh, but still within reason. So I'm, I'm very curious to see what those bullets do at uh, 500 yards. Moving over to the dented necks. The worst one we have, scrape some copper off the, sh off the bullet, we should say. I expect that one's gonna be a bad shot, but we'll find out. So this is the worst one. I actually took some jacket off. Stayed right in the group. This definitely showed a little bit of difference in the one group. We had a little more elevation, but still overall, not a bad group at all. Moving into the hit with punch. I heard about this in the past where, you know, if you have any damage in this area, you're definitely gonna see it downrange. 
Okay, that's not what I expected to see. Definitely saw a couple flyers leak out of this group on these ones, but at that, that being said, still four of the five bullets were in a tiny little hole. So I'd say out of the 15 we dropped off the ladder, uh, we've got about five of them that are not great. Uh, the tips are definitely damaged. You can see like a bit of a, a kick in the uh, tip of them here, but we'll shoot a mix of these and see what happens. Once again, pretty darn close. So can't tell you if there was much of a difference on that one either. A couple other tests we came up that we wanted to try that we didn't film was actually taking some polymer bullets and cutting the tips off of them. And then also going and uh, taking a set of pliers and bending the tips over to see what that would do to them. Those ones definitely showed uh, the largest group increases uh, from the burgers. I think the bigger issue with this is like that residue or you know, that buildup of gunk on the outside and causing issues. Once again, they shot like I expected they would uh, with that corrosion even on them. Uh, they were right in the same size that gun usually shoots. To really see if this damage was going to cause any issues, we have to shoot this at distance. And knowing that we're coming out here to 500 yards and we're going to be shooting at 510 yards, 511 yards at a target. Uh, the target we have down there is a 10 inch target. It's going to be a hit or miss situation. First group we're going to shoot here at 500 is the control group with the burgers. Okay, so I got a nice little group down there. I'm gonna get, give it another 10th left to set it up a bit more. So the next rounds we're gonna be shooting here are the ones that we uh, accidentally dropped from a bench. Uh, something that commonly happens when you are reloading. Kind of as expected with those just being dropped off the bench, they shot exactly where they should be. Okay, so next we're gonna do the, uh, the dented shoulders. Once again, something that happens when you are reloading. Um, you get a piece of uh, media on there and it dents your shoulder when you're reloading it. Okay, next we're going to do is uh, the dented necks. These are the ones I took a little hammer to and dented it in one side of the neck and then uh, seated the bullet in them. Actually, much better than I expected they were gonna be. Okay, so the next one here at 500 we're gonna do is the uh, bullets we took and shook in a box for about 30 seconds or so. Um, like we showed you at the range. You can see little like micro dents almost or micro scratches in these. Uh, we'll see if this shows up at 500 yards. I'm curious to see. Kind of surprising for the damage we can see on the bullets. The next one I'm gonna shoot is the bullets that are dropped off a ladder at 12 feet, kind of represent dropping off a sea can. So all those rounds would have hit a one and a half MOI target likely. These are the ones we took a little punch to and kind of hit right around kind of the boat tail area of the bullet. Definitely gave a good dent or good scratch to them. Kind of curious to see what that does. Well, from doing those rounds downrange and from doing all the rest of these ones downrange, I can definitely say that I'm surprised at how little difference it's making at 500 yards here. The last ones I'll do are the ones that, are, uh, that we went and corroded and we'll see how they do. So we just shot the corroded ones that we salted here and uh, they went right exactly where I expected them to go into the group. Um, so there's definitely a nice little group down there on a 10 inch plate at 500 yards. Uh, we'll run down, take a picture of it and show you guys. Six inch plate covers most, almost all of it. So pretty good considering. I would say some of those shots that wouldn't be on that six inch plate were definitely a wind because obviously there's a little bit of wind variance here, but the majority of them were right in the center of this plate. So um, elevation wise, definitely under six inches. So pretty good. So the first rounds we're gonna shoot here at 500 uh, with the poly tips are the bent tip bullets. Definitely a little surprised by those. Shooting is not, well, I should say as well as he did, but definitely not as bad as I expected. So interesting, let's see. Let's see what these ones with the broken off tips do. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that was still holding four tenths high and it went over the top. So accuracy is definitely an issue. Definitely if you have bullets like this, you find in your box or you damage them or you buy like a big bulk, bulk box. That's usually when I've seen them. If you snapped off ones, don't use them. Definitely don't use them. So our competitive shooters uh, being way too cautious with their ammo and the way they handle it and so on and so forth. Can you get away with, you know, having that round drop on a cement floor and then being able to shoot it? From the small sample size we did, yes, you likely could. Uh, now, ideally this sample size would have been much larger than we did with this. Uh, but honestly, we figured we would have seen more issues even with a small sample size we had. So that really surprised us when we did shoot this that we didn't see much difference in the damage we did to these bullets. So if you're wondering about any other kind of bullet damage, brass damage, that type of thing, let us know. Uh, we're always looking for other cool stuff to test here. Uh, I think next time we'll go and test this out at further distances and see what it does there.